So um, the topic I'm going to talk about is something that I've been well facing multiple times. Like every time I'm about to start a new project, I mean, I was about to start a new project in Logic Apps, uh, where I had to query Graph API or SharePoint API, and I had to use application permissions instead of delegated ones. I was actually trying the same um, issues over and over again. So how to do it? And then either I was copying from the previous uh, solution or I was Googling the same solutions again and again. So instead, I decided to just write my own blog post and learn it by heart, finally. So anyways, uh, my name is Tomasz Poczdek. I'm coming from Warsaw in Poland. I'm Business Applications MVP. I'm speaker, I'm presenter, I'm organizer of conferences and meetups as well, like one we are starting in about 10 minutes. <laughs> So, um, and uh, if you'd like to connect with me, it's just like one URL to, to find me. It's aka.ms slash postotech, and there are hyperlinks to other social media channels, to Twitter, I mean, X, YouTube, uh, my blog, and so on. So then feel free to uh, navigate over there. Uh, and, uh, yep. Yeah. And the topics I am going to talk about today, um, you can find more details about uh, the steps I'll be showcasing. I mean, very deep details about the steps I'll be showcasing uh, in my two latest blog posts. So uh, with that, uh, well, I'll just jump over to, to demos. So the idea here is that um, I need to build uh, well, pretty easy logic apps. Um, and they have to work using application permissions to query both Graph and SharePoint APIs. So first, uh, let's go and try with the Graph API. Um, to start with, you need to register your application. I have it already registered, so I'll just skip this step. But the registration of an application is pretty easy. The next step you have to do is you need to grant the application the permissions you want the application to have. Well, in my case, I'll be using the mail read basic so that the application is able now to um, access any user mailbox in, the, in my tenant and read through, it, through their mails. Uh, you can grant other permissions it has to be, of course, application permissions by um, pressing the button at the permission, and then you can choose from whatever hundreds of endpoints um, that you can uh, well choose from. The point is, once you do grant a uh, new permission, um, and it's on the app level, it will most certainly require the admin consent. Bro. Just so, oh, are you back, Thomas? Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I'm suddenly okay. back. Am awesome. I? All right. We, yeah, you're back. We can hear you now. Yep. Okay. So then, just be sure you you press that grant admin consent or ask an admin to do that for you. Now, the second thing you need to do is to navigate to certificates and secrets, because to access Graph API, you need to have a valid um, secret. So then. Once you create a new secret, you need to grant it a name. You need to as well define how long should it uh, work and then copy the value. So this value you will need for later because we want to use Key Vault to store every confidential information, not to put it plain text in your flows uh, or anywhere else that anyone can actually access them. So copy that. And the second thing you need to copy and remember is the client ID. So the client ID. Uh, together with directory tenant ID. So these two other information you need to learn and copy because later we'll use them to set up um, an authentication. Now the next step, you have to set up a key vault. Now the key vault must be in the same region as the region where you are going to build your logic app. In my case, it's the West Europe. And in key vault, the very important thing for both um, accessing SharePoint API and uh, Graph API, I mean, it doesn't matter what API you're accessing. Um, it's matter uh, in terms of what um, of how you want other applications to allow them to access the key vault. So what I recommend you is first after you create a key vault, navigate to access configuration and switch from the vault access policy into Airbag, so the Azure role based access control. Uh, it's not only that Microsoft recommends it, but I do that as well. Uh, it's just much much safer and much more flexible. And then once you switch that access permission or the access model create the secrets. So in my case, I have two secrets. I have a graph client ID and graph client secret. Uh, about the SharePoint client ID, I'll get to that later in a second. So I have them too. And last thing, well, you need to build your logic app. So in my case, I do have already a blank canvas of a logic app. What I'm missing 
is I'm missing the integration with Key Vault and the ability for the uh, Logic App to actually query the Key Vault and obtain the secrets. So to do that, you need to navigate to um, identity in your Logic App. And then, because we want as well the uh, access to Key Vault to be done on behalf of the application account, not on behalf of a user, therefore we need to uh, assign it an identity. So turn on um, and save the system assigned identities. <clears throat> and then once this is turned on, you'll be able to uh, assign the Azure uh, identity. So then add role assignment, then select the Azure Key Vault. You have to select as well the subscription where you have your Key Vault provisioned, of course. So in my case, this is the going to be the key del, um, KDW. And then speaking about the roles, uh, this is what the RBAC in roles. In our case, what we want, because right now um, the Logic App is, well, has to be able to query uh, secrets, so we need to grant it a role that is called the Key Vault, sorry, um, Key Vault Secrets User. And this role is uh, going to allow uh, the Logic App to query data, query secrets from the Key Vault, but not to manipulate them. All right, so then the role is being assigned, and once it is assigned, I'll be able to go back to uh, the designer and simply add here an action that is going to allow the process to get these secrets. Uh, Azure key vault. So let's get secret. Let's call it client ID. Now you can see here I have already a list of all the secrets and as well a certificate, but let's not um, go too far yet, uh, and then copy and paste. So then the secrets number two is going to be uh, the client secret or the app secret. Now, one important thing about the, the, the actions which are querying um, the Azure Key Vault is that you may want to set these two features here to secure input and output so that even if someone has an access to Logic App and is able to see the, um, the runs history, even if they go into the run history, they will not be able to see what was returned from the Key Vault, so then your secrets are not exposed. Once this feature is turned on, you'll see this small lock as an icon on the action. So that is a pretty cool thing. Uh, and also every action that uses this data is inheriting this security setting so that I don't really need to set it everywhere else. All right, then just I'll replace these two places, these two values here. First, the client ID, I need to put in value, then the client secret, and again, the value, uh, the value. Um, and then, well, that's, that's done. So I'll just save it and let's see how it works. Right now, the process should simply be able to uh, get me my emails. Oops, there is, oh, sorry, uh, right. So there is this access token authorized error. Um, and that is, that is because, oh, that's a good question why it was, why, why it didn't work. Uh, graph API and graph, uh, maybe I just chose, sorry, maybe I just chose the wrong, Yep, I haven't switched here to, the, to take a secret. Obviously, demo guts are not very nice today. But anyways, now it worked. So once I refresh the run, yep, the, and the action was able to actually access my mailbox. And oh, just trust me, it was able to get all my emails from my mailbox. All right, so the Graph API it's pretty simple. You need to get the client secret, client ID. Then you need to generate yourself the bearer token. And then with this bearer token, you're able then to uh, call any endpoints in Graph API. Now with the SharePoint API, it's a little bit more um, fun or a bit more complex because apart from having again the uh, App registered, you need to grant it a certificate. So the authentication to SharePoint API most I mean, it works the best using the certificate. So to do that, you need to navigate to Azure Key Vault and then hit to generate or create new certificate. You need to grant it a name. Um, oops, it doesn't. 
Okay, you need to grind the name. Then it should be a self-signed certificate unless you have one that you have acquired from somewhere. Then for the CN, so the common name is always the SharePoint.com because we want to grant, um, the, I mean, use the certificate to authorize all these calls coming, go, going to the SharePoint endpoint. And then you can configure additional settings like how long should the certificate be valid and so on and so on. Now, once the certificate is generated, I have one already here, then open it and go to the latest version. And from the latest version, you need to download the certificate in that SEER format. You're going to use it to authorize an application to call SharePoint API. And so once you got this SEER format, you need to navigate into the API permissions of the application that you have provisioned. Where do I have it? Here. But this time, sorry, um, to, to certificates and secrets. But this time, instead of generating new client secret, new client ID, I mean, new client secret, you need to switch to the certificate tab. And under the certificate tab, hit the button upload certificate. And in here, upload that SEER file that you have downloaded from the keyboard in the first place. So that is the second step that you have to do, uh, speaking about the SharePoint application. And then the third, well, actually, is to navigate to your Logic App and to set up the whole integration. Again, if you're building a new application, just be sure that you have went to that you have gone to identity configuration that you have switched on the Azure roles management for the application for the Logic App, and that you have granted a specific um, role. In my, in our case, in this case, we need to grant this um, application, this Logic App, uh, actually, <clears throat> a second role because this time it is not only going to be allowed to query secrets but it as well has to be able to query um, certificates, right? So then I'll go to the Key Vault, and then there is a second role that is called Key Vault Certificates User, right? So that's a second role that will allow the application, which is called the Logic Gap, um, to access certificates as well. Lovely. So now once this is added, once this role is added, I can now, Come on, show up. Well, trust me, it should be here. It was added. All right, I hope it's gonna work. So now I'm able to switch back to the designer. I'll just copy this action in here. But this time I want to take the SharePoint client ID because that's a second application. And also, I need to get the certificate. So I need to get the SharePoint.com certificate. Now, one thing important is that, as you may see, all these actions are using the connection well, with this name, but it's using the managed identity. So I've created a connection based or using uh, an application permissions. So just I, need, I went to add new. And here I switch from the client certificate out into the managed identity. Then I typed in the key vault name, and that simply created a connection for this logic app. Uh, okay, so here everything is set up. Now I need to as well configure an action that is going to call HTTP endpoint from SharePoint. It's going to be a pretty simple call, just get details of a web. So what I have to do is to provide a client ID for, for the application which is here, and you need to select the credential type from secret to certificate and provide a certificate. If your certificate was protected with a password, type in a password or get it from the key vault as well. If not, like in this case, then you don't need to actually do anything else. So with that, I should be now able to just replace these two scopes and save and run so that the process is able to now get data from SharePoint web. And refresh. And hey, there it is. So with that, I was able to get this beauty information from my SharePoint website. So all these details about the website is here. And well, that is pretty it. So again, if you would like to know in very details like what to do in every step to set up this kind of configuration, uh, it's on my blog. So feel free to, to learn and use it yourself. Thank you very much.